research is a very creative process. It leads to lot of innovation and takes lot of energy of the researcher as well. But especially when the novice researchers start with doing a research or when they plan to take up a research, the first part, the first stage which they come across, identification of a research problem is a very, very challenging part for them. And since it comes right in the beginning, the novice researchers get tensed up about whether they will be able to conduct it further. So in this particular session, we will be discussing about how to identify a research problem, what are the various sources we tap and how does the exact procedure goes. For identification of research problem, one needs to take lot of efforts. Now there are various sources from which the research problems could be identified. So first we shall be talking about these sources. Some sources could be static kind of a sources while some other could be dynamic sources. The dynamic sources could be further classified as the researcher himself or herself and uh, other persons. So we shall see the details of these types. The static sources for the research problem are basically the literature that is already existing. The literature may be in the form of books, journals, research reports, technical reports, at times even statistical reports, census data, there could be encyclopedia, seminar reports, newspapers, the term papers and so on. So basically static resources are those resources from which the information is not going to change but it provides a lot of theoretical foundation for the researcher to take up a research. The discussions amongst all these static researches gives the various dimensions to the researcher and then one can choose the research topic accordingly. Now the researcher has to finalize his or her own research problem. For this amongst the various resources the researcher himself or herself form an important source. How does it happen? The researcher has the ability to observe the things around and to experience the current practices. The researcher in this case reflects upon his practices or even others practices and these reflections help him to reach the final title of the research. One can also reflect upon the practical aspects of an issue. Also maybe at times due to technological advancements the modalities change. For example, when ICT came in a big way in the classroom, the modality of the classroom teaching change, the role of the students change, even the role of the teachers change. And if researcher wants to take up a research in this area, then the study of and the reflection on these kind of technological changes help the researcher in reaching the final study. Now this is not only the internal processes that the researcher goes through but one needs to take into consideration the observations and the experiences they may be in the classroom, may be during the recess, may be in the outside the classroom at the places of seminars and so on. At times the researcher may be also witnessing something in the community which would give birth to a research. The other uh, mode of the dynamic resources is the other persons. Now the interactions with the other persons always help a researcher in getting the different perspectives of the issue at hand. It also helps in getting the different points of views which the researcher might not have thought. Now which could be the various modes of interactions with these other persons? It could be face to face mode like uh, the discussion with the colleagues, friends. It may be also the discussion during the seminar paper presentation. Nowadays with ICT coming uh, in a big way, these discussions are also possible using ICT through either synchronous modes or asynchronous modes like it could be blogs, chats, emails or uh, even the um, postings on the social media. So all these deliberations definitely help in getting the deeper understanding of one's own study. 
whom does the researcher discuss the questions in mind? It could be students, fellow teachers, fellow students, the experts in the field, parents, maybe the practitioners and uh, only after talking to all the stakeholders, the researcher gets the complete picture of the scenario. Thus, the researcher can tap the various static and dynamic sources, maybe in the form of printed literature to actual deliberations with the human resources. Now, after such deliberations are over, the researcher goes on narrowing down his topic for the research to the actual doable format. And then the researcher starts actually jotting down the research title in the crude format. While deciding on the topic of the study, there are various criteria that need to be considered by the researcher. These criteria are classified into two categories. Number one is the internal criteria that is all those factors which are related with the researcher himself. And the other category is the group of the external criteria, all those factors which are outside the researcher but they have the bearing on the research. So we shall discuss each of these criteria one by one. First we will discuss the internal criteria that is the factors which are associated with the researcher. The first one is the interest in the area of research. Here the researcher should ask the question whether I am really interested in conducting this research, whether I really like this area of study. Since research is a rigorous process, lot of energy of the researcher goes into the research. And that is why it is very essential that the researcher answers this question right in the beginning that whether he or she is spending his time and intellect into the area of his or her own interest. If it is not the area of interest of the researcher, maybe eventually the researcher would lose the interest and thus the, all the efforts would go in vain. The next internal factor that needs to be taken into account is the researcher's own competence, the researcher's own expertise. Imagine a research where one has to collect the data through observation or through interview and the researcher is not a good interviewer or if the researcher is not a keen observer, then it will be quite possible that the crucial data is missed out during the observations and the interview. Thus, the researcher's competence has to be taken into consideration and actually the researcher has to take the judgment for herself or himself, whether I will be able to handle this kind of the research. And then the researcher can decide whether the research study that has come in his or her mind is the right choice. The third internal factor is the resources that are available for the researcher. The researcher might have a reach out to a particular group of sample and hence the data collection from them would be possible. But at times it is not possible to reach the sample then leave apart the research with them. So the researcher needs to give it this a thought that whether I have the enough resources to conduct this research and to reach this sample. So these were some of the internal factors, the internal criteria which were having bearing on the choice of the research. We shall now discuss the external factors, the external criteria. There is a long list, we will go one by one. The first factor is the researchability of a problem. Now whether the problem is really researchable that the researcher needs to ask himself. There will be a lot of energy going into the research and it will make sense only if the researcher spends that energy into the area which is researchable. Otherwise one should not take up such a research which does not have enough researchable aspect. The next factor is the novelty in the problem. Since it is the research that is the once again the searching is being conducted, this when while doing it the next time, 
it has to be the something new. Maybe a group is studied through sociological angle earlier, then the newness could be added by having say educational angle or maybe political angle. Only in that case there will be something newness added to it and unless there is something new to the current efforts made, there is no point in spending the energy in the research. The next factor is whether the research is urgent and important in the current social state. At times the research has lost the social context and the usability in the current context. In such cases, if that research is taken up, then it will be once again the wastage of time and energy. So the researcher has to ask oneself whether it is important, whether it will have the usability in the society today and then one should go for the research at hand. Another aspect that the researcher has to consider is whether I have the facilities needed for the research available. At times for some researches one needs some infrastructural facilities needed. For example say Facebook is to be used for the interactions. The internet connectivity needs to be uh, available. Similarly if research is being conducted in the classroom where ICT is used to a greater extent then such kinds of facilities need to be available in the classroom. So the researcher needs to ask himself right in the beginning whether these kind of facilities will be available for this research. And only if the answer is yes for this question, the researcher should go ahead with that topic. The next factor is the feasibility. Whether it is feasible to get the data from that sample group. Whether it is feasible to even reach that sample group. So only if the answer is yes, then it will be possible for the researcher to conduct that research. So the researcher has to take a call on that aspect. At times it happens that certain data collection procedures are so vast that the researcher needs the help of the other research personnel for collection of data. Now in this case it is not only his uh, or her own competence but even the competence of the people who are involved in the data collection would matter. Under such circumstances, the researcher has to check whether such kind of research personnel are available for the research and then go ahead with the topic at hand. Magnitude of the research is another aspect where especially the novice researchers make mistakes. Since the novice researchers, they are not aware of the depth of the study and how much quantum of work goes into a research they many a times land up taking a research which is has a very vast scope of conducting a research. They don't take into consideration the timeline that is at hand and then take up a very huge research. So many a times we land up asking them a question that you are a student at master's level and are you attempting to get the doctoral degree at uh, master stage itself? So the magnitude also needs to look into and the researcher should take care that the magnitude of the research should be such that it gets completed in the timeline that is available at the researcher's hand. Finance is another important aspect. Certain researchers need a lot of financial investment. So the researcher needs to tap the possibility whether he or she uh, is able to shell out that kind of finances or is there any funding agency which is giving the financial aid. Only if such kind of financial support is available then the researcher can take up certain type of researches. The researcher needs to ask himself or herself how much time do I have at hand and then how much actual data collection work will be completed during that time. The answers to these questions would give him or her a better judgment of how much the scope of the research should be. The last factor under this external criteria is the ethical considerations. Especially for the researches that come under social sciences, the researcher needs to deal with the human beings. It is possible that at times 
one lands up asking them such questions which they are not comfortable answering. Maybe at times even their permissions are required for collecting the data from them. This is true in case of especially observations or interview. Maybe at times the sample is not ready to share his or her own work to the researcher for the research purpose. So all these factors may matter during the data collection procedure and hence the ethical considerations come into picture. If one collects these things without the notice of the person involved in the research, it will be a very unethical practice and that is why one needs to consider the ethical considerations before taking up a research. So thus we have discussed the many internal and external criteria that decide the topic of the research. So one needs to consider each factor one by one and then answer the questions to oneself and this kind of reflection would help in reaching the right problem of the research. It will be interesting to see some examples of research titles. We shall be reading them one by one and I would like you all to take uh, time and reflect upon those titles and see where they could be repaired. So we read the titles. Studying how effective is Pebble in the Pond model for instructional designing, for teaching storyboarding, for multimedia objects in online learning where the students are visual learners. Now in this title, what do you feel after reading the title? Whether it is worded in the apt words, whether there are any necessary terminologies missing or whether there are any unnecessarily words that are added, just give this a thought. We go for one more example, awareness and acquisition of IBSTPI standards in Indian instructional designers. Now just like the first example, try to apply all the criteria to this title as well and see whether it is complete in itself or whether there are any missing aspects. We see the third example now, evaluation tool for evaluating the discussion forum. Now on the basis of the experience of the earlier two examples, you will be able to even work on this particular title. Thus we have seen the examples of three titles and the three varieties of the number of words that are used in the title. So we shall be discussing about some of the do's and don'ts of the writing the research title. If we reflect upon the three titles, one can note that the title is a perfect balance of giving enough of clarity as well as avoiding the excess number of words. So one has to strike the balance between the two. There should not be any such key terminologies missing in the title without which the title will not make sense. In attempt of giving such crucial words, it should also not happen that the title would become so long that by the time the reader reaches the last word, the person would forget what the beginning was. So thus the, it has to be the balance between the clarity and the description both. While attempting writing a title, you can check for some of these things. Just check whether there are any extra words or extra descriptions that appear in the title. If your answer is yes, then try to write them in some other words or try to remove such unnecessary words and check for yourself whether the essence of the title is still there or is something important, crucial has been removed from the title. Then you will be able to take a judgment on whether these words are needed in the title or otherwise. Check whether you have given the geographical area of the research. Now the details such as geographical area can be given in the further research proposal where one will talk about the scope of the research, maybe the population and the sample. There is no need to give the geographical area unless it is an action research. So see to it that geographical area does not appear in the research title. Also see to it that the verb that appears in the title is not in the to 
or ing form for example if one is trying to study the effectiveness of something it should not be worded as to study the effectiveness of in the title the moment the to word will come to study it will not remain the title it will become an objective so the word to should be avoided in the title similarly studying the effectiveness of something even that should not be written it should be only study of effectiveness of something so the ing and to should be avoided in the title while writing the verbs many a times it happens that one writes the repeated words in the title so one needs to ensure that such repeated words do not appear in the title the title is kind of a small statement so if the same word appears multiple times then it becomes irritating for the reader and it is unnecessary use of the same word twice so one has to take care that the same word does not appear twice in the same title the full stop should not be given at the end there is a difference between a title and a sentence the sentence has full stop at the end whereas the title is not expected to have a full stop at the end so the care has to be taken that there is no full stop given at the end of the title so we saw some of the aspects which need to be avoided while writing the title now once again try to reword the title so that the essence is captured by avoiding unnecessary words in the title while writing the title also ensure that it talks about the variables that are under study no title will talk about all the variables that could be under that study but it will definitely indicate the core independent variable that is under consideration so just ensure that you are mentioning this independent variable in the title similarly at times the title indicates the research method that is to be used so you can even check whether the title is giving the indications for the research method that is under study research is a process that takes lot of rigor on the part of the researcher and that is why the journey of this rigor begins with a simple and a short title one has to ensure that the title gives enough description of the area under study as well as at the same time it avoids the unnecessary descriptions of the terminologies only if the title is aptly worded then the further process of research would be falling in place for the researcher it will be also helpful for either the evaluator or the other audience of the research to understand what exact focus of the researcher is in that particular study thank you